Hello, everyone. And um, yeah, thank you for joining us today in this session. Um, I'll be, uh, my name is Tomas Carmel, and I'll be talking over the four, next 45 minutes about Prisma Cloud, the first cloud native security platform, full lifecycle in and across any cloud. But before starting today, I just want to say thank you to the Europe Clouds team for making this great session possible and building this awesome agenda. So over the next 45 minutes, I'll be talking about some general challenges that we see in the market when customers are adopting cloud and cloud native applications. And I'll be spending the majority of the time by going through Prisma Cloud, the main pillars of the platform, all the use cases that we try to solve and the great outcomes that we provide to our existing customers. So let's kick it off and start talking about the market trends. And so, you know, we, we clearly see in the market two big sales motions going on in parallel. What's the first one? Um, it's about the cloud adoption, the public cloud adoption. And, and, and this public cloud adoption is happening everywhere. And this has unique characteristics. You know, this, this is happening with a lot of decentralization. There are different teams adopting the cloud, either the marketing teams, HR teams, sales teams, each of them are adopting some different flavors of the cloud. And uh, in, in these dynamic environments, changes are happening continuously. We have you know, um, different companies, internal employees, contractors, outsourcing companies that are really adopting very, very fast every single new service, every single new application that is being released in the public cloud. And uh, when we talk about public cloud, you know, the new normal nowadays, uh, I would say this is the hybrid cloud. We see hybrid cloud being the, the, the most common flavor of cloud. We see customers are using AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, Alibaba, and many other clouds, depending on which applications and which services they want to use for each of these cloud providers. And while this public cloud adoption is happening, there is in parallel a second motion going on, which is the changes and, and, and transformational changes in the software development lifecycle. We came from a world, let's say a, a legacy world, where we had a two or three releases per year. And, and, and the status quo between the applications team, the service, the, the security teams, and the, the networking or, or infrastructure teams, this, this status quo was very well defined. We're moving into a different approach. We, we started some years ago, um, you know, evolving from, uh, you know, the waterfall to agile. The applications were, and the architecture of the applications were also moving from monolithic approaches to microservices. And nowadays we've got DevOps everywhere, right? And, and so these interactions or these uh, releases have been moving from two or three releases per year up to two or three releases per month. And this is the status quo between the applications, DevOps and security is not really working well at all. And that's why we need to talk about DevSecOps and embedding security within this new software development lifecycle. And I talk about these two motions in parallel because we see customers that are adopting the public cloud um, and they're just doing lift and shift of the applications, but we are also seeing customers that are deploying cloud native applications in their on-premise data centers. They are, re they are relying on, on some flavors of Kubernetes or containers on-premise, and they're not even deploying anything in the public cloud. But definitely we see these two trends going on in parallel in, in, in the most of the cases. And when we talk about, you know, uh, digital transformation. We talk about cloud adoption. This digital transformation is just a reality. You know, the number of uh, startups that are becoming unicorns every year is just booming. And, and traditional companies that are revamping their businesses to make them digital or provide a new digital experience to its customer is just growing dramatically. No matter if we're talking about banks, about retailers, industrial companies, even ourselves as consumers, we buy online, gaming online, even dating online, right? And, and all this digital transformation relies 
in the cloud and cloud native application. But there, the security challenges are, are here, right? With all these decentralization, agility and speed, we find, and this is actual data that comes from a, a Unit 42 research that we from Palo Alto Networks did with uh, you know, evaluating infrastructures, code files, uh, Docker configuration, uh, or, or Linux and Windows servers, we identified that nearly the 42% of cloud formation templates are insecure. And we find customers adopting automation more and more. And we still find that companies are assuming that somehow um, microservices and, and, and containers are secure by default. And well, this is not the case. We find 51% of uh, exposed Docker containers using insecure defaults. And, and some of the traditional staff like host vulnerabilities or compliance risks that are, are, are still the same. We're talking about the public cloud, we're talking on-prem cloud or, or legacy approaches as well. So um, let me talk to you about how we see customers adopting the cloud. And, and we identify three big stages in which we can, let's say, uh, identify the journey of the different customers to the cloud. We find customers that are adopting the cloud and, and they are just taking the first baby steps into the cloud, doing the lift and shift on sub applications and, and the security objectives for these customers are very important, but not really complicated at all. They're talking about compliance assurance, building a, some kind of governance in the cloud. And as long as they are, became, be, as, as they are feeling more secure, uh, and, and they are comfortable within the cloud, they expand the usage and they expand to use cloud native services. They re-architect their applications. They are adopting some type of containers, um, managed Kubernetes or, or serverless or whatever combination of them. And, and when we think of the security objectives for these customers, we find that they, they care about threat detection or vulnerability management or, or really having a CMDB for the public cloud. Now, we, we also have and find very mature customers in the cloud. We, we find startups that are you know, born in the cloud and, and uh, they, they automate everything. They, they, the maturity or the scale state uh, according to this model is when we automate everything and so security needs to follow this automation. We need to auto remedy things. We need to provide incident investigation and we really need to embed the security across the whole DevOps lifecycle. So let me talk to you as well about uh, something that you may be familiar with, which is um, the server responsibility model. When we are deploying uh, applications and infrastructure in the cloud, we need to identify two levels of security or, or two levels of security responsibilities. The first one is how do we secure the services that are being offered by the cloud providers? And this is where the CSPM acronym comes in play. The CSPM stands for Cloud Security Posture Management. This is a Gardner created concept. And, and this is the way that we are securing all these nice services that are being offered by the CSPs. How we secure the secure groups, the, the VPCs, the VNets, the, the storage packets, right? And, and this is, um, kind of a control plane in the cloud. And then we need to think as well on how we secure our applications, the code, the, the, the software that we are running on top of, of these cloud providers. And we can either run them in a traditional VM or we can run it in a containers or Kubernetes node or even in a, in a serverless function, right? So these are uh, the three layers uh, you as a customer when you are deploying uh, some type of applications in the cloud, you need to think of securing the service layer and the compute layer. So having talked a, a little bit about the market, setting the stage, I want to take the opportunity to introduce you Prisma Cloud. This is the first cloud native security platform. And how we are here today is through a deep investment that we have done over the last 24 months. Palo Alto Networks invested more than $2 billion not only acquiring market leaders, but also creating a company within Palo Alto Networks with over 800 employees working exclusively for these uh, operations. And we started this journey in 2018, acquiring two market leaders in the CSPM space. 
we acquire Redlock, we acquire Evident IO, and, and then moving into 2019, we acquire another two market leaders in the CWPP space, Twistlock, uh, container security leader, and PureSec as a service, serverless security leader. Um, and we completed the, the acquisitions in, 20, in, in 2020 with Operato, a micro segmentation company that we acquired to enrich the capabilities. So all in all, we stopped selling these products as, as they were, and we integrated in a unique platform with a single agent, single management UI, single SKU, as we will see moving forward. So let me introduce you who are the, the, the four pillars, which are the four pillars of the cloud native security platform today. And we have aligned the marketing message with the Gartner terminology. So it's more, it's easier to understand for the market um, in terms of use cases and features. Think of all these features included in the platform. We, as just, we are just segmenting them for the ease of understanding. We started with the cloud security posture management. And, and this is all about visibility, governance, compliance, or how we you know, define guardrails in the cloud. And, and we detect and respond to threats, maintaining the compliance. And um, we, we talk about lots of different use cases. We will see later in the presentation, but some of them are visibility, compliance, governance, threat detection, and data security. Moving into the workload level, right? So it, it, this is how do we secure your host? How do we secure your containers, Kubernetes, serverless, even your web applications and APIs in a comprehensive way? We need to provide you with vulnerability management, runtime defense, compliance, and CICD integration for all these different types of workloads. Because what we see is that the majority of the customers are deploying a mix of workloads in the cloud nowadays. And you decide which of these workloads is more appropriate for the, the specific applications you are working on. Moving forward, let's talk about cloud network security. And, and, and you know, network security is kind of a complicated thing in the cloud to simplify with a single use case. And that's why we think that the right approach is giving customers with a multi-layer approach of security use cases around network security. We start from uh, securing and managing security groups in the public cloud, but also ingesting network flow logs and correlating them with threat intelligence feeds. We're offering identity-based micro-segmentation capabilities. So you really have the option to enforce policies without relying in any, you know, of these uh, cloud native uh, services like NSGs or security groups. We are offering the first containerized next generation firewall. And we are leading the market back in, you know, from back 2013 when we released our virtualized next generation firewall. So it's a multi layer approach trying to achieve the highest standards across network security in the cloud. And last but not the least, We'll talk about the cloud infrastructure and data management. And this is all about identities. We'll provide you with a comprehensive visibility into excessive and unused privileges across the clouds. We'll provide you with pre-built IAM policies to immediately enforce security best practices, create reports on any compliance issues. And we automatically calculate effective permissions to resources and adjust IAM permissions to mitigate these risks. So all these features comes in this fourth tier. And I talked to you before, uh, we're covering uh, any cloud, any stack, full life cycle. And, and let me spend some time here because traditionally security has been a runtime issue. We have deployed our firewall, we have deployed our, our malware, uh, IPSs, load balancers in, pro in, in production once the applications were running. Now we need to think on how we secure the whole cycle. And this is why we from Prisma Cloud are doing a massive effort to integrate with any stack of tools that you are using. We start releasing plugins from the IDE of the developers, we are scanning Git repos, we are scanning registries and repositories, 
We are also integrating with the CI-CD tools, no matter which CI-CD tools you are using. And we are supporting any type of runtimes in, um, in your environment across uh, the major cloud providers, as you can see down before. Well, let me talk to you now about how we offer Prisma Cloud. And, and Prisma Cloud is, is being offered in three different flavors. We've got two SaaS flavors, and think of these SaaS like Netflix or, or Amazon Prime, in which you get a subscription, you get a tenant, and, and this is immediately working for you. And, and we try to create the basic edition, which is the business edition, for these customers that are adopting the cloud and really have these high level security objectives. But we also have the 4K resolution uh, enterprise edition, in which we provide you with full features around the control plane in the cloud and about the data plane in the cloud. We, thought we segmented by API visibility and defender-based runtime protection. And, and definitely, we also find some customers that are running their workloads in an air gap environment, for instance, without any type of uh, connection to the outside world. And this is why we have in our portfolio compute edition that will allow them to secure their workloads, uh, no matter if they are talking about traditional VMs, containers, or Kubernetes on-premise. We have created a comprehensive licensing um, methodology, which is based on credits. We, we say workloads, credits, or think of these as virtual tokens. And, and, and I will be talking about this later on. Um, essentially, this uh, single SKU and licensing flexibility enables customers to buy a certain amount of credits or tokens and apply these credits in each area that they identify, they require more attention. So we find customers that are buying a certain, certain amount of credits and they start using these credits for basic objectives like, like compliance and visibility. And as long as they get more and more confident, secure in the cloud, they are reutilizing these credits and they are allocating these credits into more advanced use cases like vulnerability management or runtime defense. I told to you before how important um, is enabling um, a DevSecOps environment in our customers. And we truly believe that we can only achieve that goal with, through integration. We, need to, we have released plugins and we are supporting lots of different CI tools, secret management tools. We ingest secrets, by the way. We are supporting different technologies moving from uh, containers on premise or containers, Kubernetes as a service, Fargates, Lambdas, you know, uh, the, the majority of the workloads available in the market today are supported by Prisma Cloud. We are scanning the most, uh, the most common registries. You find some of these registries there as well. And we are running on the, 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 the most famous uh, container platforms Docker, Cryo, OpenShift, Rancher, Tansu, et cetera, et cetera. All these flavors are fully supported. And as of today, we are supporting a large number of cloud providers. Um, well, we are continually working to expand it, but we truly feel confident that we are providing the best coverage to our customers today. And um, none of these would be relevant if our customers are not utilizing the platform. This is why we have created a methodology. We have created processes and operations uh, to make sure that our customers acquiring this solution can take value this as soon as possible. And we created a methodology that uh, it has four main stages, set up, configure, integrate, and optimize that allows our customers to get all the value from, of the platform within the first 60 days of using it. Well, um, within 20 months working and selling Prisma Cloud, we are extremely proud and extremely happy of the results. 50% of the 14,100 already rely in Prisma Cloud. More than 1,200 enterprise customers around the globe. And we are securing more and more and more uh, cloud native environments and um, you know, deployments of our customers. We find customers across every single industry we work with. 
and, and you can find some highly regulated sectors like banking and finance. You can find even some of our competitors in some other segments of the portfolio. But, you know, as I said at the beginning, the digital transformation is happening everywhere. This is why we have in so many um, references. Um, and and uh, before getting into the use cases, I also want to highlight uh, Prisma Cloud being recognized by the analyst. Um, Gardner is continuously working in, in you know, innovating and providing customers with uh, valuable reports about different market categories. And within the latest uh, market guide for cloud workloads protection platforms, they recognize Prisma Cloud as one of the three vendors converging the CWPP and the CSPM capabilities. These two worlds started as a disparate world, separated worlds. Uh, as, as we are moving forward, customers, they don't like having different tools for managing the cloud and cloud native security. They, they are asking us every day to consolidate all these use cases and find convergence around the CSPM and CWPP. Well, um, let me deep dive a little bit in the CSPM product architecture and the use cases that we cover. Um, when, whenever a customer signs up with Palo Alto Networks, with Prisma Cloud, we provision a tenant. And this tenant has got different layers. The first one is a data lake in which we are ingesting and homogenizing, correlating different data coming across the different cloud providers. And the first thing we provide customers with is visibility, asset discovery, inventory, and really a cloud CMDB. So they can keep track in real time of the resources, how these resources are growing or decreasing, where these resources are being deployed across the different regions. And most importantly, what's the coverage for each of these resources? We keep track of every single change for resources. We highlight these changes. And whenever these changes are bringing security issues, we highlight it and prioritize it. Once we get the visibility, we are shipping the platform with more than 500 out of the box governance policies. And these policies are being, are being created not only for the runtime, but also in the build phases as well. We are scanning cloud formation, Terraform templates. We are scanning uh, Kubernetes files. So we are sure, we try to make sure that we are also preventing bad things or misconfigured resources before they are actually deployed. But if you, you are not automating your environments or if you don't want to check your templates, we can check them once they are deployed. And we define guardrails. Think of any of these policies as a guardrail in which the security team will be looking at deviations. And in case someone is, is going across the fence, we can detect, remediate, alert, and integrate with many different tools. Well, every single policy that I saw you before is aligned with one or several uh, compliance frameworks. We are covering more than the, the 13 uh, more relevant frameworks across the industry, ranging from CIS, NIST, PCI DSS, ISO, GDPR, et cetera, et cetera. And, and, and from a single pane of glass, customers can evaluate the compliance posture across you know, different frameworks, or they can even build their own custom framework for continuous assessment of the infrastructure. I talked to you before about the AAM, and, and we are performing static analysis with predefined checks. We are uh, calculating the permissions, resources, adjusting the permissions in case that we identify a risk. But we are also leveraging machine learning uh, technology to profile every single user in the cloud. We profile device fingerprinting, we profile activity-based location, which type of services this user is, is often utilizing. And whenever we identify deviation across this baseline, we flag this and we make sure that these alerts are uh, getting integrated with a CM, a SOAR, a ticketing tool, or any other, um, or any other uh, workflow that you want to implement. More than this, 
Prisma Cloud offers a very powerful threat detection and investigation capabilities. Some of the biggest uh, data breaches or, or threats in the cloud are, uh, are happening through a misconfigured resource. And we can talk about uh, over permissive security groups or storage packets being publicly available. So sometimes we identify a misconfigured resource, but we want to actually investigate if, for instance, this security group with a port 20 to open is, um, is being exploited by anyone. What type of traffic has been flowing through this security group in the port 22? And that's why we are pulling in all these flow logs. We are correlating them to give you visibility, north, south visibility, but also east, west visibility within your VPCs or VNets, um, depending on which CSP you're working with. We correlate all these uh, flow logs with threat intelligence feeds. We correlate it with open source feeds. We correlate it with our own unit 42 feeds and with autofocus, which is the threat intelligence, the big data uh, threat intelligence tool from Palo Alto Networks. And in case you want to trigger some advanced remediations, we are getting integrated. We are definitely integrated with the MISO or Cortex XOR. Uh, and, and you know, through this integration, almost any remediation action is possible. Well, um, I hope that you uh, enjoy the CSPM part of the product. And now let me deep dive in the other side of the product. And let me talk about the workload protection side. Let's look at the workloads from the inside out. Let's provide security from the inside out. Um, to complete the, the, the posture, the security posture of uh, the platform. And I told you before that we are providing security across the whole cycle. We are providing security from the build phases, the ship phases, and the runtime. Um, there are different use cases that we are offering here, and I will go through all of them uh, moving forward. But uh, there are two use cases that we cover uh, holistically from the beginning till the end, which is the vulnerability management and compliance. We'll be scanning the images when they are created. We'll be scanning the images when they are stored uh, in, in a registry or repository. And we'll be uh, looking and scanning the running containers, the running host, or uh, when, when they are already deployed uh, in the runtime. Well, um, vulnerability management, I think this is kind of uh, relevant uh, when we are talking about cloud native deployments and you are, you've got some teams that are working, creating images and it has a base operating system. It has some dependencies, packages, uh, frameworks like JavaScript or Python, et cetera. What we do with these images, the first time we see them is we scan, we split by layers and we provide with relevant data across vulnerabilities, right? We look at the Docker file, we, we find the entry points for, for vulnerabilities, and we are not only giving you the vulnerability, but also how critical this vulnerability is. And uh, some extra additional context, like if there is a fix available, uh, which version is fixing this vulnerability, etc. This visibility is not only available within the console, we are giving this visibility across the CI CD uh, stages. And we are doing this through plugins, the ones that I mentioned before, or through some binaries that you can run even within your laptop. Um, runtime defense, and this is all about um, how we protect a running application, right? Whenever this application is running in a host or, or a container or serverless, right? So how do we make sure that no one is exploiting a vulnerability? or uh, trying to escalate privileges doing a lateral movement or exfiltrating some data. We, we really have a powerful model relying on static analysis and dynamic analysis to understand what's the normal behavior for any, any type of workload. And this model is you know, especially relevant when we talk about containers that are typically they're immutable, right? So, we, we try to understand containers from different perspective. We understand which are the processes that are being executed in, in, this, in this container. We understand uh, what's the network activity, uh, ongoing, uh, outgoing 
um, communications, which ports, which processes are communicating uh, either outbound or inbound. We also try to understand what's the file system activity, which processes are writing in which specific paths. So we create this type of allow list for every application. And whenever we find some uh, anomaly, we flag these and you can get uh, full incident forensic data that you can either investigate within our UI or you can export it for further investigation. Web application and API security is, is one of the recent announcements on enhancements that we have done in our platform. And we incorporate the, the capabilities to protect uh, against OWASP top 10 uh, threats like SQL injection or code injection, et cetera. And we can take different actions like alerting, preventing, banning things. And, and, and we are doing these for host. We are doing these for containers. Think of an Nginx running. We are capable with a single click of deploying a WAF in front of this Nginx and protect you uh, against all these uh, threats. Identity-based micro-segmentation. And this is also uh, one of the recent announcement that we have done to enrich the platform. Um, in, in this complicated world where customers are deploying workloads across different cloud providers, on-premise data centers, adopting different technologies, right? Like uh, Kubernetes in Google Cloud, a lift and shift, uh, EC2 uh, services in AWS, or whatever combination of them. We need to give you a comprehensive and, and, and an easier way to apply network segmentation. And uh, this is coming from the operator, uh, operator acquisition. We are giving you the option of applying identity-based micro-segmentation. We are ingesting tons of metadata from the cloud so we can identify sources and destinations based on namespaces, VPCs, VNets, uh, processes, images, you name it. Anything can be a source or a destination for a network policy. And we are not relying on security groups or we are not relying on any third party or, or uh, ACLs to enforce these policies. We are giving you as well these enforcement capabilities while keeping historical flow log recording for uh, compliance and uh, governance things. Access control, and this is all about the infrastructure, right? So we just want to make sure that we are not only auditing, but also letting you uh, establish some prevention across uh, the infrastructure itself, who is creating a privileged pod or, uh, you know, uh, we are also doing real-time uh, stream processing of Kubernetes audit sync. We incorporate in an open policy agent within an, our defenders, so you can implement any check across the infrastructure. And we are also integrating with uh, some secret management tools. We are ingesting the secret in the images. Uh, and this is very useful, for instance, when customers are having different vaults with different, uh, different vendors across their environments. Compliance, um, and yeah, definitely uh, it's, it's super relevant for us, not only from the CSPM side, but also from the workload protection side. Uh, we are incorporating more than 400 compliance checks that are aligned with the Docker benchmark, Kubernetes benchmark, CIS benchmark, and then we map them through industry standards like GDPR, uh, NIST uh, special publication 800, 190 for container security or any other framework. So um, this is predefined within the platform. We'll be checking whether your images are being created with a root user or if a container is running as root, if your host has got uh, the Samba enabled or we'll be keeping track of sudo SSH events, et cetera, et cetera. At any time you can augment the compliance checks uh, by leveraging you know, some scripting capabilities that we are offering you. We, we are implementing, as I said before, uh, an open policy agent within the infrastructure. So you can leverage Rigo as a, as a language as well to implement checks. Um, and finally, 
I want to talk about the shift left strategy and the CICD integration. Um, all this visibility, all these uh, prevention capabilities is really use useful, but it will be even more useful if we give it to the DevOps team so they can get the visibility and, and, and in the risk that their, their developments are bringing. And uh, if we give them this context, we, we experience that uh, you know, DevOps and, and uh, the, 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 the architecture teams are definitely leveraging this. Um, so we released different plugins, uh, you name it, for Jenkins, Azure DevOps, Bamboo, et cetera, et cetera. So we can scan your images. We can scan your registries. We can implement policies like, for instance, you know, you are not allowing, um, you are not allowing um, images from a public registry being deployed in one specific namespace or one specific pod in production. Right. So all these things can be achieved through the CI/CD integration, and uh, this is definitely one of the key features. Uh, that customers loves about us. Well, um, I think that um, I finished uh, my presentation and um, I, I just encourage all of you to go into our website, uh, get a personalized demo or even request a free trial in case that you want to uh, experience Prisma Cloud by yourself. I hope you enjoyed the session and uh, I think we've got some time ahead of us just in case you want to uh, share some questions or uh, go through some of your concerns.